नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टीज लाइव फोन इन इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम आई एम तानवी खुराना एंड दिस इज अ साइंस क्लास फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु स्टार्टिंग इन क्लास नाइन्थ आज का हमारा विषय है एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स हम समझेंगे कि एटम्स और मॉलिक्यूल्स क्या होते हैं और इससे जुड़ी कौन सी जानकारी है जो आप सभी के लिए बहुत लाभदायक है हम इस बारे में बातचीत करेंगे पर आपके पास भी कोई सवाल है कुछ पूछना चाहते हैं तो यू कैन गेट इन टच विद अस यू कैन सिंपली कॉल अस ऑन आर नंबर व्हिच इज डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन इफ यू वांट टू ईमेल अस द ईमेल आईडी वुड बी डी टी एच डॉट क्लास नाइन एट द रेट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन इस वक्त आप हमें लाइव देख रहे हैं हमारे ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नौ पर और साथ ही साथ हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल पर भी जो कि है एन सी ई आर टी पी एम ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नौ चलिए आपका परिचय करवाएंगे हमारी आज की मेहमान से वी हैव विज मिस स्वाति बेडेकर मैम अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू यू मैम इज द डायरेक्टर ऑफ डिस्कवरी साइंस रिसोर्स ग्रुप वडोदरा गुजरात तो चलिए एटम्स और मॉलिक्यूल्स को समझते हैं मैम से पूछते हैं मैम अगर हम एटम्स और मॉलिक्यूल्स को एक बेसिक डेफिनेशन में डिफाइन करेंगे बच्चों के लिए सो व्हाट वुड दैट बी मैम नमस्ते एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स एंड एज दिस क्वेश्चन इज बीइंग आस्क दैट व्हाट आर एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू अ स्टोरी दैट long long time back in india uh, there was a rishi or a sage uh, who constantly studied about uh, science and the matter particularly the matter and he said that if we cut the matter uh, in very tiny pieces and if i go on cutting it for a very very long time a time will come that i cannot cut it any further and he named it parmanu that is the smallest part of the matter kisi bhi padarth ka sabse chhota ansh hoga parmanu much later a greek scientist said the same thing he said if we go on cutting the or if we go on reducing or dividing a matter a point will come that i cannot divide it further and that will be the smallest part of that particular matter matter and he called it atom uh the meaning of the atom is that you cannot divide it further so something that is undivided that part is called a atom now to study atom uh we will really need to study or learn the laws of chemical combination that means the matter combines with each other two different things combine to make something else and in that the first law is the law of conservation of mass that means the matter any matter even after chemical reaction you cannot create matter or you cannot destroy matter this law states that mass can neither be created nor it can be destroyed in a chemical reaction this means that during a chemical reaction the sum of the masses of the reactants you know what do you write on the left hand side and the products on the right hand side they will be absolutely equal or the mass or let us for your understanding let us call it weight weight will remain the same of the reactants and the products that means nothing from the reactants will get destroyed or no new product will be created the reactants combine with each other to form a product and mass or weight of both the sides remains unchanged it remains equal left hand side is always equal to the right hand side so this is the first law of chemical combination that is the mass in a chemical reaction of the reactants and products remains unchanged 
Now to do this, uh, you need to do this small activity that if you take a conical flask and take sodium sulfate solution and add some barium chloride solution in an ignition tube. Uh, that is the small test tube. Hang the ignition tube in the flask by a thread and pour a cork on the flask. You can see that here in the figure. Find the weight of the flask on the balance. Can you see the weight is written there? It's 300.23 grams. A chemical reaction is going to take place and sodium chloride and barium sulfate are formed. The two reactants, that is uh, calcium chloride solution and sodium sulfate solution react with each other and what is formed is copper sulfate in a white precipitation and salt, common table salt, that is NaCl. These are the products. Now, if these products, if they are also weighed on a balance, you find the weight exactly to be same, that is 300.23 grams. Now, here two products are reacted with each other and two different products, two reactors react with each other and two different products are formed. But you can see here that the sum of the masses of the reactants and products remains unchanged. That is, as many atoms take part in the reaction, the number of atoms or the mass of the reactants remains same even if different products are formed in the reaction. Now, you must have got some idea of this first law. Now, let us see what happens or what is the second law. Now, here, this is the law of constant proportions. Now, this law of constant proportions, see, whenever a molecule is formed, two different elements combine in a certain proportion. And this proportion is never changed, never ever changed. Now, let's see here that in a chemical uh, combination, the elements are always present in a definite proportion by number. That is, let us, for example, consider a water molecule. Okay, uh, you all know the formula of water, that is H2O. The, the two hydrogen uh, uh, molecules are present and one oxygen atom in two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom is present. Now, water always contains two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, combined together in the same ratio, that is 2 is to 16. Now, here try to understand what is 2, number 2, and what is this number 16? Yes. Uh, you already have studied the mass number and the atomic number. Uh, so, two. There are two hydrogen atoms. One is the atomic number of hydrogen. There are two hydrogen atoms, so that makes it two raised to 16. Two uh, equivalent to 16. That is, 16 is the mass number or atomic number of oxygen. Now here, if you take a ratio, uh, two proportionates to 16 is, mathematically, if you take, it becomes 1 is to 8 by mass. 2 is the mass of hydrogen atoms and 8 is the mass of oxygen atom. The water is decomposed. If we decompose the water uh, molecule, you get 1 gram of hydrogen and 8 grams of oxygen. Now you understand, there is one oxygen combined with two hydrogen atoms. And if you decompose it, you get 1 gram hydrogen present and 8 grams of oxygen present in the water. Now, here, you cannot make any change, right? One day you might just say, like, we have a lot of oxygen, so let us make water by combining, uh, you know, 2 is to 17 or 18 
ratio of oxygen. No, it is never possible. The, uh, the law says that in a chemical combination, elements are always present in definite proportion by their mass number. We might take another example here. Like if you see ammonia molecule, that is NH3, one nitrogen and three hydrogens, always contains two elements, nitrogen and hydrogen, combined together in the same ratio of 14 by 3 by mass number. Now here, 14 is the mass number of nitrogen and there are three hydrogens. So one, 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 all three combined, the mass number becomes three. So like we saw in water, it was, the ratio was one is to eight. Here, the ratio is 14 is to three for ammonia molecule. Have you understood? The laws, very important laws of chemical combination, because once we know this, understanding atoms and molecules becomes very, very easy. Now we will see some more properties. Now, uh, if you see the electron microscopes and all such things to study an atom came much later, but much before that, atomic theories were developed. These people had not seen atom, but some people had calculated it, some people had decided the mass, some people had decided the structure of the atom also. So let us see here Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton said, matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Uh, all of us learned that atom is the tiniest particle of the matter. And Dalton said, matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Atoms are indivisible and cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So whenever chemical reaction takes place, an atom of any element remains as it is. It may combine with many different elements, but in itself it remains as it is. Atoms of a given element are similar in mass and properties. That means Say you are taking atoms of oxygen. Two different atoms of oxygen will be same in its mass and its properties. Like two different molecules, uh, two different atoms of hydrogen or for that matter, any you take any metal like copper or iron. Two different atoms of the same element will be same or similar in its mass and its properties, they will behave exactly the same way. Atoms of different elements have different masses and different properties. Like the atom of hydrogen and atom of oxygen will be absolutely different in its mass and the way it behaves, that is, that is its properties, will be very different. Atoms combine in small whole number ratios to form compounds. Now, what is a compound? When two different atoms combine together and stay together to show some kind of properties, we say that it has formed a compound which may or may not have different properties. Okay, atoms combine in small whole numbers ratios to form compounds. When two atoms combine together, it forms a compound. In a given compound, the relative number and kind of atoms are constant. Okay, now if you take like say example, for example water. Water is a compound which is formed by two elements or two atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. But the properties and the kind of atoms, like you cannot form water by combining hydrogen with nitrogen. 
it will always take hydrogen and oxygen to combine to form water. Now, let's see more. Let's understand more about an atom. An atom is the smallest particle of an element that may or may not exist independently and retains all its chemical properties. Why I say may or may not? You are aware that whenever we talk of hydrogen, we always say H2. That is two hydrogen atoms combined to form a hydrogen molecule. It doesn't exist independently. We always say O2, that is oxygen, always exists by combining two atoms together. But in some elements, the atoms of that element may exist independently. Okay. Atoms are very small in size and smaller than anything we can imagine or compare them with. When you can imagine anything, any small thing, the atom will be smaller than that. Okay. Ma'am, uh, when now, we say... atom is not squarish or atom is not rectangular. Ma'am, what uh, is the shape of an atom? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, ma'am, when we say that the atoms are very small in size, is there any weight that we can define atom with? Uh, you really can't compare it because okay. it is as small as that you can't uh, see it with your, uh, forget naked eyes, but even with uh, electron microscope, uh, maybe you are able to see it uh, because electron microscope, you can see the uh, radius, uh, sorry, you can see the nucleus of the atom, uh, but uh, you can almost say that uh, suppose you put a draw, uh, dot on a paper with a pen, uh, take a pen and put a dot on the paper, you know how many atoms will be there in that small dot, as many as 35 billion atoms will you know will be there in that one small drop or dot uh, done with a pen so now you can imagine how small it will be and that is why you cannot measure its radius or its size and that is always measured in nanometers okay uh, we take the atom to be circular or uh, spherical in shape uh, we cannot take it call it circular because it, it is not two dimensional it occupies space from all sides so that is why we always uh, calculate its radius and you can calculate its radius in nanometers it cannot be in centimeters or even in millimeters it has to be very very small uh, measurement uh, uh, for that so you can imagine what is a nanometer one nanometer is 10 raised to minus 9 meters. So imagine if you just, you know, uh, back calculate, reverse calculate uh, or um, multiply 9 times. It, became, it makes a very tiny, very tiny space. That is 1 meter is equal to 10 raised to 9 nanometers. Uh, for example, the atomic radius of an atom of hydrogen. The hydrogen we have been talking about it uh, for some time now uh, so let me tell you the atomic radius of an atom of hydrogen is 10 raised to minus 10 meters or radius of the molecule of water is 10 raised to minus 9 meters so now you can imagine how small an atom is Swati ma'am always calculate the radius or measure the atom in nanometers do you have a question? Yes, uh, ma'am, we do not have much time left. So, I am requesting yes, you so, to please so wrap bit, it up. We talk a little bit about mass and uh, we'll conclude. Yeah? Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, here you can see some molecules. That is, nitrogen combines together, two atoms combine together. And here you can see a molecule and how it is uh, in motion always. Uh, right now, well, ma'am, ma we'll yes. continue this uh, in further programs. Uh, we do not have much time left. Thank you. Okay. I would uh, thank you for being a part of this program, and uh, you did explain the concept of atoms and molecules very well to all our students and learners. Thank you so much.
थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सभी बच्चों का भी हमारे साथ जुड़ने के लिए बातचीत करने के लिए हमारा साइंस का कार्यक्रम था नवी कक्षा के सभी बच्चों के लिए जहां हमने पढ़ा आइटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स अगला आने वाला कार्यक्रम हमारा होने वाला है हिंदी का एक कार्यक्रम जहां आप पढ़ेंगे दो बैलों की कथा कक्षा नौ के सभी छात्र हमारे साथ जुड़ सकते हैं बातचीत कर सकते हैं और अपने सवाल भी हम तक पहुँचा सकते हैं एंड विद दिस वी आर रैपिंग अप दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोग्राम बट जस्ट वॉन्ट टू रिमाइंड यू वंस अगैन कि आप अपना की वोट जरूर दीजिएगा चुनाव का ये पर्व पूरे देश में चल रहा है और जोर शोर से चल रहा है तो आप इसका हिस्सा जरूर बनिएगा लोकतंत्र को आपकी जरूरत है और इस पर्व में हिस्सा लीजिए मतदान जरूर कीजिए मैं भी करती हूँ और आप भी जरूर कीजिएगा एंड विद दिस वी आर थैंक यू वंस अगेन फॉर बींग अ पार्ट एंड फॉर गिविंग अस योर टाइम आई एम तानवी खुराना एंड आई टेक लीव ऑफ यू नमस्कार